What's going on YouTube? My name is ADC Art Attack. His name is Bob, and welcome back to a brand new episode of my cheap versus expensive YouTube series. I don't know if I'm doing it the right way when I... Cheap versus expensive or cheap versus expensive? Hmm. <laughs> this is the series where I, ADC Art Attack, take two art supplies in the same category, put them up against each other to see which one of them is worth it at their respective price points. And I gotta say, Today is the one you've been waiting for. The one episode that everyone has been requesting the most, it's finally here. Copic versus Winsor & Newton Pro and Brush Markers. This is, this is gonna be big. Now, before we begin, it should be said that I love Winsor & Newton Pro and Brush Markers. You know this, I've been using them for a very long time in my videos, and I have steered clear of Copic Markers, mainly due to their price tag, but there are some other reasons behind it, which I will expand on as this video progresses. I am going to try my best to be as unbiased as possible and hopefully help you in choosing the right product. That being said, let's take a closer look at the products we're gonna be using today. Starting with the Copic Chow 72 Set B Markers. Now you're probably wondering why did I purchase Set B? Well, it's very difficult to get the entire set and the entire collection of these where I live, and also, they are so expensive. I mean, this set right here cost me $250. What? That's insane. Now, to be fair, if you are living in the US, these are a little bit cheaper for you, but I live in the EU, so these are much more expensive for me. In any case, damn. Now, the reason I have the Copic Chow markers and not the Copic Sketch markers is for one simple fact that they are the cheaper alternative, but they are the same marker. They use the same ink, the same nib. The only difference is the casing and the fact that they have less ink, thereby making them cheaper if you think $250 is cheaper for a set B that doesn't even have a black. There's no black marker in this set. Look, okay, black should be a standard in any marker collection. I don't care if it's set A, set B, set C. There should be a black in every single collection. Wow. Going up against the Copic Chow markers, we have the Winsor & Newton Pro and Brush markers. Now this is just a placeholder collection I've got right here. I purchased this just for the sake of this intro there you go, there's that. Um, <laughs> what a way to blow money, huh? But this is the collection of Pro Markers. Now, obviously, this is not the entire collection. They have a whole lot of pens, and they also have a brush marker variant, which is exactly the same marker, albeit they have a brush nib instead of a bullet nib. So it's totally okay to crossbreed. You can use each one together, and that's fair. Now, I'm not gonna bore you with the exact pricing of these markers because no matter where you are in the world, the pricing is greatly different because one of them is an EU brand and one of them is an American brand. Or Japanese. I don't know. But I will say this, the Winter & Newton have a massive collection of colors with 160 of the Pro Marker variant and 72 of the Brush Marker variant. But the Copic markers have a whopping 358 color range. What? <laughs> I don't even know. I can't even think of what colors they are, but yeah. I can't say I've ever wanted more colors than I already have of them, but there's that. However, there is one very big factor to take into consideration, and that is that no matter where you are in the world, these markers here will always be cheaper than the Copic markers. And if you're living in the EU, that difference is massive. These are less than half the price, so yeah, that's a pretty big deal, actually. But which one is worth it? That's what we're here to find out. You do make a lot of noise, don't you? <laughs> right, so starting things off, well, I need to do a drawing, something we can use for this comparison. And if it wasn't already obvious, today I'm gonna be drawing Loki, but not just Loki, an original Loki. Now this drawing I'm doing here is, much like my previous episodes, somewhat symmetrical. Now I shan't be sacrificing a good look for symmetry, as I have done in the past, but I'll try to maintain a level of control here. And this image of Loki came from sourcing various different Lokis from his classic comic book self, to a more modern Loki, even Tom Hiddleston himself, with the head. And the overall pose I'd like to mention is in reference to this Deadpool image. Naturally, I'm making changes, but I wanted to show you that creating original content doesn't necessarily mean not referencing. 
It's important to have some form of anatomy to use, be it another image, a photo, or even a mirror. Have something to fall back on and guide you. That being said, here's our Loki. I am super happy with this. It's essentially a collage of all Lokis brought together and I... I think it's going to serve its beautiful purpose as a battleground for our markers. So, let's get ourselves the pro markers and begin. Moving on. Now, while I'm picking my colors, let me say a couple of things here that are super important going forward. First off, these markers are not new. Some of them may lack ink, some may be fresh. I will do my best to mention this during the piece because that's pretty important. The other thing is, yes, I am using the brush marker variant too. Now, I've already said this several times, but just to reiterate, they have the same inks, they are the same price, so therefore, they are 100% fair to use. Right then. Let's go. Okay then, so as we begin with the base layer, as I do all of my drawings, I'm going to be using the brush nib variant or the pro marker. Because they give a much more even coat than the brush variant, and while smaller areas are more difficult, due to the faster ink flow, the mid to large areas are perfect for these nibs. And this is one of the better things about the bullet nib. And yes, I do have the brush variant of this specific color, so I have zero areas of difficulty if I wish to switch, but the bullet nibs fill the gap that the brushes cannot. Definitely not a nib you should be scared of or ignore. Now with the base coat done, I'm going to move into the second tone. I personally, even if I were going to hide the entire base coat, would still do one. It can alter the second tone, but also removes the white base, which means much more coverage. Anyways, so this second layer, I'm using this one to start the bridging point between the true colors that I wish to achieve with Loki, and also mapping out the highlights, which is where I'll be bringing the brush nibs in. You see, the brush nibs have a slower ink flow than the bullet nibs. And if you are controlled in your pressure when using these pens, you can achieve beautiful gradients with just a brush nib alone. No need to mix colors. Or you could push the blend as I am doing today. So let's chit chat about that blending. Keep in mind, I am using sketch paper. This is because I personally don't like clean, smooth blends. I prefer texture and controlled mistakes. Basically areas that don't look perfect, but they were intentionally not meant to. So they're kind of mistakes, but they're nice mistakes. They, in my opinion, add character to a piece. So much more than just having everything be perfect. Even so, the power of these markers, it would be lying to say they aren't perfect. You can blend and blend as well as you like. The ceiling on these is very, very high. Meaning, the more you improve with the markers, the better the results you will get. Way before you hit that ceiling of what these markers are capable of. And that's a very good thing. It basically means that these markers can follow you throughout your entire career from start to finish. They'll support you. They'll guide you on your starting journey from the beginning, the moment you pick up these pens and you begin to use them, all the way through mastering them and trying out new techniques. These pens will carry you from beginning to end. And that's one of the reasons why I have personally stuck with these for over 10 years now. I'm forever pushing my limits with these pens and I am always learning new things with them and I enjoy using them. Now, the pigment. How much is in these pens? How much coverage? How even are those tones? Well, I think it speaks for itself. The colors are what they say they are. If you get an apple green, you get an apple green. And in one single layer, we see that color, which is quite something. 
For a pigment to be so strong that it requires no extra layers to force it, you really have to appreciate that. But without coverage, without even tones, does that even matter? Well, <laughs> I mean, there's not really much patchiness here, is there? Again, this is sketch paper, which sucks the pens dry, which normally would mean very, very many patchy areas, but the pro markers just don't care. They somehow managed to get the right amount of ink mixture in these pens, where the alcohol dries and the pigment remains even. So yes, they work beautifully on all paper types, which makes life so easy. Yes, although I've not done it in this video, trust me, I have used these pens on pretty much every paper type that you can think of, and there's really no major differences, other than personal preference and style. But other than that, they work. Here's a point to talk about. How's the finish on these colors? It sounds like a crazy point, but have you ever used a marker and in the wrong light, it reflects or glows? I know I have, and it sucks, especially if you're recording or trying to take a photo. But again, yeah. Matte finish. Oh, I love these pens. What the f- Um... What happened? Okay, um... Problem. The, the power's... Yeah. All of my electricity is gone, so... Um... That... Kind of messes with things a little bit, because now I've got nothing to record with. I got no lights. Or microphone. Or music. Oh, I got no music. Oh my... It doesn't actually look too bad like that. Maybe, maybe we could make a video like this. Let's, yeah, let's, let's carry on, shall we? No, <laughs> I'm kidding. Okay, so um, yeah, I guess for you, this is gonna take just a couple of seconds, but for me, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. All right, the hair. Um, Honestly, I'm not going for much here. I think a solid color with some highlights will just be enough. Fortunately, I do have a black marker for pro markers, but I really am being lazy with this area as we have done enough blending, so this part is just for contrast. I mean, maybe it can be testing the layering, but honestly, I just don't want to spend too much time on the hair, so done. Now then, the face. So I have so many skin variants and to be honest you will find any color you need with these markers as the same with Copic. Each of these marker brands has pretty much every color you can think of so the only differences here will be solely down to my ability to accurately choose the colors and also if I do actually have the right colors which might be a problem for Copic later on so I'm gonna try to pick the colors that I will also have in the Copic collection that I have as well. But this area is one of few where you really do need the brush markers. To get into these very small areas and differences around the facial features, you need the precision that the brush provides. You could definitely use the bullet nib if you like to hate yourself, but I'd recommend personally using the brush. Plus you can blend a lot softer and smoother with the brush, so it's ideal for the face. Mm. 
Now then, the pro marker side is done. What do you think? Now, we aren't going to spend much time here as we need to move on, but we will go over this side later on when we are done with both. However, I do want to mention the vibrance because I think that's a big factor right here, and a lot of people are going to question the lack of depth. Now, that does come in part to me not having a deep green. No idea where it is. I had one, but I don't anymore. It's gone. So at the end of this entire piece, I might add some black shadow to both sides, but only when it's complete. We'll see. Moving on. Okay, so right off the bat, there is a couple of things that jump out to me, especially after using the pro markers, I'm noticing these issues. The first one is the ink flow of these markers. Granted, it may just be the one that I'm using now, but it's a far slower ink flow. That's neither good nor bad, but in larger areas, it's pretty bad. This could result in some patchiness, so luckily this is just the base color, and I would still 100% suggest that you do one. Hopefully the darker other colors are faster. Oh, and also this color. Okay, so I want the colors to be near identical for this comparison sakes. However, I couldn't match the base greens. I don't have it. So we have to settle on this base color. It's not too important, but it will change the results and it might look a little different at the end. Totally being honest, I am nervous going into this stage because people swear by Copic and I've been using Promarker for years. I'll be seen as biased if they aren't great. And I have kind of, you know, bigged up Promarker quite a lot today. But I want to remind you, I don't get paid by either of these companies, so I don't care who is better. I don't benefit from one being better than the other. If anything, I just want to know myself. So, Copics. They suck. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, there are issues. Now, some people are going to mention the paper and remind me that marker paper is better. To them, I say, I've used Promarker on every paper type and there are no problems to be had other than different styles. And today they handled this sketch paper smooth and easy, but Copic seem to be having some trouble. Not only is the blending not really well happening, but the pigment is separating. And we see that in the presence of these white dots. This tells me they are far more diluted than the pigment of the Pro Marker. Yes, I do hear you crying in the back that the sketch markers are way better markers and this is totally unfair. But let me remind you, Copic Chow are sketch markers, just with less ink for a lower price. The nibs, the ink are the same. The only difference is the design and the quantity differ. No excuses. It shouldn't be this difficult with a marker that carries such a high price. I understand that they do have their own branded paper, but it should be versatile. If one company is getting it right and their markers are working on every paper type, there is no reason a company with such high merit and such high cost for their markers should be struggling in areas the competitor are not. I'll tell you what, the more I'm using them, the better they're looking. The deeper tones are most certainly easier to blend than the lighter ones. I wouldn't say they are perfect, but I do like the imperfections, so I'll say I do like this so far. We are still seeing that separation of the colors occurring, however, which is going to bug me for some time, but I will try not to mention it any further. Overall, with the greens done, I would say we have a pretty good result. I like the gradient shift, though that's more of a color picking thing, irrelevant to the comparison, but it looks nice, and I like it. Yellow time! While I work here, there's a point I never mentioned with the Pro Marker that is actually super important and relevant, and there's no better time to mention it than here with the Copics. 
These pens are working really well when going over the black inked line work. Now granted, the ink has had far longer to dry than the Pro Markers, but based off of experience, I can say they do work a little bit better than the Pro Marker. There is far less risk, not far less risk, there's a little bit less risk. It's not that big of a difference. There is less risk of smudging the lines, and that's actually a big deal. I do love that I can work here with very little worry, so hats off to Copic here. I don't know how they've achieved it, but these markers do handle ink very well. So skin tones. Now I actually have a skin tone collection I'll be using, so I won't be using from set B. Which is cool because I can basically pick the exact same colors that I used in the Pro Marker set. And this should give us a good look at how they differ. And in the small areas, the brush nib of the Copics feels amazing. They are very accurate and I feel I have total control. But unfortunately, and I know I said I wouldn't speak about this issue again, it's doing it again. Yeah. But in terms of color, they do look good and they work well together. So there you have it everyone, the Pro Marker versus Copic is complete. What do you think about it? Do you like it? Do you love it? Let me know in a comment down below. And I know, it is very difficult to tell them apart looking at them side by side like this, given that they are very similar. So let's take a closer look at each one of them, starting with the Pro Marker. I feel like I'm repeating myself a lot when I talk about Pro Markers because I use them in most of my videos and you have seen me throughout the years using Pro Markers and I will always stand by them as a perfect marker. They are absolutely amazing. Yes, there has been times that I have graded markers ahead of them such as the Graphic B collection for their own little touches but overall Pro Marker is for me the perfect marker and as you can see with the results, they are just beautiful. But if we jump on over to the Copic side, now these markers are everyone's favorite. Everyone loves a good Copic marker. And yes, I will say when you use them on other sheets of paper, such as marker paper, they excel. They are very good markers. They even work well on Bristol board. They are fantastic markers, but that's not what we're doing today. We were using sketch paper and I don't care for excuses here because if the pro markers could handle it, then these definitely should given that they are double the price in fact, they're more than double the price. It depends on where you are in the world, but most of the time they are so expensive. The colors are absolutely beautiful and the pens do work fantastically well with each other. I actually do like the results here today, but I can't deny the issues and that being the color separations and just how bad they were at blending on this paper. Maybe I need to do another edition using marker paper, but that shouldn't be the case. They should be versatile. But I guess in the end, we are left with one question, which is worth it. The $500 Pro Marker side or the bank loan and a second mortgage Copix? My worth it winner has to be the Pro Markers. They are just too good at what they do with very little holding them back and a price that is fair. Now the Chow variants are great and I still believe they are worth it too. In fact, Copic or Pro Marker, you can't go wrong either way. But as someone who is cautious with money and the difference between them being so close and so debatable, why not just go for the cheaper alternative? And that is unfortunately all we have time for this episode of Cheap vs Expensive. I will see you all in the next video. If there's anything you'd like to see in the future, please leave those comments down below letting me know. And yeah, take care. Bye bye.